Hello guys and welcome to my channel. This video will be a full crash course on making this little cottage house. With these techniques you will be able to create basically anything. In the first part we will do the modeling, and in the second part we will be dealing with the shading and rendering. If you have trouble navigating in Blender, please check out my video for absolute beginners. Let's get right into it. Let's start with deleting the camera and the sunlight. I will enable the move tool to make the modeling easier. Select the cube and go into edit mode by pressing tab. Select the top face and press E for extrude. Select these two vertices and press M, select merge at center. Repeat at the other side. Press Ctrl plus R, and give this face 5 edge loop with your mouse wheel. Left click to confirm. Select the middle edge and go into front view, enable proportional editing. Now, you can bend the roof top slightly inwards. In the Modifier tab, add a Mirror Modifier, enable Bisect as well. Select the roof faces and press Shift plus D, press right click to snap it back to its original position. Press P and choose Selection. This way you can separate objects. Select the newly created object, and apply the mirror modifier. Don't forget to disable proportional editing. Let's apply a solidify modifier on the object, in object mode. Enable even thickness, and apply the modifier. Select the bottom two faces and extrude them with E, press right click, and scale them along the normals by pressing Alt plus S. Now, scale the roof on the Y axis. In edit mode create a support edge loop, with Ctrl plus R, use the right mouse button to center it. Create another one, and slide it a bit like this. Select face loops with Alt plus left click on a horizontal edge. Same as before, extrude, then right click. Alt plus S to scale them along the normals. Apply the scale with Ctrl A. I am using a mirror modifier to get the same result on the other side. Press apply. Add subdivision surface. Right click and set the shading to smooth. In edit mode add support edge loops to create sharpness where needed. Here I create a loop in the middle, then divide it with Ctrl plus B. Select the top edge loop with Alt plus click and bevel it with Ctrl plus B. By the way, use Alt plus Z for X-ray mode.
select the top faces. You can select a shortest path between two faces with Ctrl left click. Scale them on the X axis with S and X. Shift A and create a new cylinder with 8 vertices. I deleted the bottom face with X and insetted the top face with I, then merged them in the center with M, because we will add a subdivision modifier later. Also, bevel these edges with Ctrl plus B. This will give some sharpness with the subbed modifier. Let's scale it down and move it to position. Shade smooth and apply scale with Ctrl A. I use a mirror modifier and select the default cube as mirror object. And another subdivision modifier. Our roof is done. Let's create a girder by making another cube and scale it down. At this point, I enable cavity, so we can see the edges a bit more clearly. I use mirror modifiers a lot. Let's continue with the walls. I duplicate the girder with Shift D. You can use the middle mouse button after duplication to lock the movement on one of the axis. Let's delete the mirror because we don't need it at the moment. Rotate and scale until you got a shape of a plank. Apply the scale and add an array modifier. This way we can easily cover the whole wall. Play with the values and scale until you get the result you want. Use mirror to cover the other side as well, saving a lot of time. I always use the default cube as mirror object.
Duplicate the plank to cover the front and back of the house. Play with the modifiers as before. We got the walls done. I made the bottom part by simply creating another cube. Let's create the windows. Make a new cylinder with 18 vertices. Scale it down on the Z-axis and apply the scale. In edit mode select the top and bottom faces and inset them by pressing I. Delete the middle faces. Select both inner edge loops with Alt plus left click. Use Shift to add to your selection. Right click and select bridge edge loops. Select this edge loop and press Shift D to duplicate and press F to fill the hole. This will be our window. Move it to its place. Let's make two other planks inside our window. Use Alt plus D this time to create linked duplicates. This means if you edit one, the other will also be edited. Select all the parts and make linked duplicates with Alt D. Rotate it on the Z axis. If you hold Control while rotating, you can use increment snapping. You can see the rotation degree at the top left corner. Rotate it by 90 degree.
I will create the door this time from the planks. Same method, play with the values and scale. Adding more detail to the door. Remember to use Alt-D when you duplicate items, you want them to be the same. Let's move on and create some planks. I am using linked duplicates here. As you can see here, if I edit one of them, all the others are being edited. To solve this, click on the number in the Object Data Properties tab. This will separate the plank from the others.
Press right-click and set the origin to geometry. Shift S and select cursor to selected. In edit mode select all with A and duplicate it to create a pole. Scale it only along the X and Y axis by pressing Shift Z after scaling. I am using the basic modeling tools as before to add some interesting looks. Go back to object mode, apply scale, and add an array modifier. Select linked by pressing the L button in edit mode. Play with the values until you are satisfied. Create more planks to cover the gaps. I cover the other side with mirror modifier. You can copy modifiers with Ctrl L. Just make sure you select lastly the object you want to copy from. Now, we lost our array, so simply add it back.
Create more planks. Create some variations by moving the planks a bit. This will be our stairs. A simple plank with a ray modifier. Reset the 3D cursor's position with Shift C and create a plane. We have to make a ground. Making support for the stairs. If you press X, Y, or Z twice after scaling, you can scale object along their normals.
Copy the mirror from one of the planks. Create a new cylinder with 12 vertices for bigger supports. Copy the mirror again. Let's create railing from duplicating one of the planks. Save some time and copy the mirror again. We will add the back one by hand. So let's do that. It doesn't have to fit perfectly. Looking good so far. Let's start creating the lamppost by duplicating one of the planks. The modeling process is really easy box modeling. You can just follow along.
center the origin point with right click and set origin to geometry. This way you can rotate it more easily. Rotate on the Y axis by 45 degrees. Remember, if you press one axis twice after scaling, it will scale the object along its normals. Duplicate the upper plank and center its origin point. Press Shift X to only scale it along the Z and Y axis. Place the 3D cursor to the newly created object with Shift S and select Cursor to Geometry. 3D cursor defines the place in 3D space where new objects can be created. Let's create the chains now. Inset the front and back faces, then delete them. Bridge the inner edge loops. Duplicate the chain link with Alt-D, and rotate it by 90 degrees. The 3D cursor is already in place, so we can create a new cylinder perfectly in the middle. Don't forget to apply scale. Create a Z edge loop in the middle with Ctrl R and right click. Now, split it with Ctrl B, press E for extrude and right click. Now you can scale them along normals with Alt S. Some more basic extruding and insetting faces. Select all, and move them a bit closer.
select the lamp and right click shade smooth in object data properties enable auto smooth looking great so far reset the 3d cursor with shift c i will create some simple plants shift plus a and add a uv sphere shade it smooth and add a subdivision surface modifier In edit mode select some edge loops with alt and left click, bevel them, and add some interesting look to it. Flatten out the bottom part with S and Z. Looks like a marshmallow ice cream. But it will be a stylized bush. Press Shift and S, select cursor to selected, so we can create a vase in the right center. Shade smooth the cylinder and use auto smooth. Inset the top face and extrude it down. Scale it down a bit along the Y and X axis. Press S and then Shift Z, place it to your liking. Copy the mirror modifier from one of the planks. With right click you can place the 3D cursor somewhere else. Create another UV sphere, shade smooth and scale along the Z axis. This will be a tree. Select the bottom part, enable proportional editing and move it up a bit. Change the effect radius with mouse wheel. Create a cylinder for the trunk. Don't forget to disable proportional editing. Select both and press Ctrl J to join them. 
In edit mode select all with A and move everything up until the orange dot which is the origin point is at the bottom. Go back to object mode and place it to your liking. Duplicate it with Shift D and make a smaller version. This time duplicate with Alt D. Create some interesting look as we did at the bush. Copy the mirror once again. Reset the 3D cursor and create a camera. Use numpad 0 to go into camera view. Press N and check the camera to viewport option. Now, you can easily move around the camera like you would navigate in the 3D viewport. I like to set the focal length to 75mm. Disable camera to viewport so your camera stays at its position. We are done with the modeling, but need some refinement. Make the lamppost bigger. I really don't like how it looks.
Use Shade Smooth on the windows and also on the big supports. Let's add some supports to the house as well, to make it look a bit better. Add a mirror modifier and select the cube as mirror object. We are completely done with the modeling. In the next part we will do the shading and rendering. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.